So YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, we're here to talk about my post-game thoughts. As y'all know, since we've been doing the post-game thoughts for years now, uh, what that is is a more condensed version of the post-game live stream. Because y'all know them post-game live streams, they can go. They can go. And not everybody can watch the replays of that. So this is a more, a shorter version um, of that. And without me being able to get distracted by live stream comments, which I appreciate. And shout out to everybody that came through for the live, uh, the live stream during the game and the live stream after the game. I appreciate y'all rocking with us for those, what, four hours or five hours, however long it was. I appreciate it because we had a lot of fun. So now, um, just to jump straight into it, uh, Tyler Huntley. Tyler Huntley, uh, going into this offseason, I felt like he was a number two quarterback last night. Uh, continued that. Um, and he just, he, he just looked better than Trace. Uh, he looked better than Trace. He looked, um, he, he made better decisions than Trace and he, he did his thing. Now he did have, both of them had each had a turnover. Trace had the interception on that throw where he was like, all right, one of these receivers got to be down there somewhere and just toss it up. Um, and Tyler Huntley, he had the turnover where he was scrambling and he was like, all right, man, I ain't sliding. I'm, I take whatever hit. Whoever want to try to hit me, okay, go ahead. Try it. Try it. And they tried it, and they succeeded, and they knocked the ball out. Um, but he ended up bouncing right back from that and getting a touchdown. So shout out to Tyler Huntley. Um, probably one of my favorite throws from him of the night wasn't even a completion. It was the pass to Tylen Wallace. Where Ty Great throw, but Tylen Wallace just – couldn't uh keep the, the the timing of his feet on the ground and it, it was just tough it was a great catch though great catch um but it was an incompletion because both his feet weren't down uh, but tyler huntley it's, it's it's just crazy his the similarities that he has to lamar jackson and before he even steps on the field because with the hair they both they both got the, the same hair they both obviously from down here so they from the crib so that's a plus um but just their their body language their their energy the way that they are pre-snap is just when you watch tyler huntley you just see so much lamar jackson uh in him and it's it's crazy it's one of the craziest things now they don't run the same they do not run the same um but a lot of their stuff, just the way that they, when they're feeling it, like when they're playing with confidence and they, they like things are rolling, you can see it and they just, they look like the same person, man. It's, it's crazy, man. So shout out to Tyler Huntley. Uh, and shout out to Trace McSorley, too. Because uh, Trace McSorley, uh, it, it was a little bit up and down for him. Um, but I think one thing that was consistent with both quarterbacks, one thing that was consistent with all the running backs, too, uh, was the offensive line. And they were consistently... Uh, a medium-sized yikes throughout the game. And again, the reason I say it, because I know there's a lot of people tripping about the offensive line right now. But again, it wasn't all starters out there. Now, there were some starters. Even though Bradley Bozeman, they said he got an ankle sprain, so nothing serious. Uh, Zeitler, he wasn't out there. Stanley wasn't out there. But Alejandro Villanueva, I, I know he, <laughs> he struggled. My guy, uh, he struggled, but it's it's part of the process. And it's... He's making a little transition right now, um, and he's just going through it, growing pains. Um, so hopefully, in this preseason, it's the first game of preseason, first time you're going up against somebody else. Now they have said he's been struggling a bit in training camp. So, uh, but hopefully, he just get get it all out of his system now. And and again, we got to remember he was not playing with starters next to him. He was a starter, but our starting right guard, whoever that's gonna be. Um, no, our starting right guard going to be Zeitler. He wasn't there, um, so he wasn't even playing next to a starter. Uh, our starting left guard, whoever that's going to be, he wasn't there, unless he was. But it's just – so the offensive line, I know a lot of people freaking out about the offensive line. Oh, my gosh, they were terrible. They were so bad. They couldn't run block because J, J.K. was out there for like a serious something. He, he couldn't get nothing, especially on that fourth down. And I, I thought they were going to do play action. I was like, no, nah, they're not going to run on this fourth down. There's no way. But they did. <laughs> so yeah man the offensive line run blocking for the most part was pretty bad all night pass blocking um it was it was in and out it, it was really in and out but run blocking for the most part all night it, it wasn't good now um jk didn't do much of anything but he got out uh williams number 34 uh he got a couple of nice runs off but for the most part he wasn't doing too much of anything uh and mccrary number 18 
Um, he was toting that thing, man. He was trying, man. He, he, when he broke, he broke, and, but he was like pushing and he was holding the ball. High. He was like, <laughs> you could tell, like he he was running, like he got something to prove. He really trying to get a spot on that Ravens roster, man. Um, so shout out to them, uh, Ben Mason. Uh, they had him playing fullback the whole night. Had him on special teams. He made a really nice tackle on special teams. So that was nice to see from Ben Mason. Um, I still do believe that he is going to be a stash candidate uh, when the time comes because I just do not see them keeping both Patrick Ricard and Ben Mason on this roster. The only way I would see that happening is if they had Patrick Ricard take more snaps on, on a defensive line or start taking snaps on a defensive line. Because last year, I don't think he really took much of any. Um, but that would be the, the only way. But I don't see that happening so I think Ben Mason ends up getting stashed. But, hey, we'll see. Uh, Josh Oliver made a couple of nice catches. He did have that one awkward drop where he kind of tipped it up in the air because he didn't, he didn't know the ball was coming yet. Um, it could have been a catch, but he wasn't ready for it yet. And Tyler Huntley, uh, it wasn't placed in the best spot. It was still catchable, but it just it, it was bad timing for them on that play uh, for both of them. Um, Tyler Huntley threw it. A uh, little too early than Josh Oliver was anticipating. And Tyler Huntley didn't put in the best spot. But thank goodness it wasn't an interception. And then on another play that Tyler Huntley threw to Josh Oliver. Uh, he threw it to him. And it was a completion. But Oliver had to awkwardly like turn up field. So it wasn't put in the best spot. Um, so that's something to, to just watch for uh, moving forward. Tyler Huntley, his ball placement. I don't think it's an issue. It wasn't a big issue because it was just those two plays, just him and Josh Oliver. So they just going to have to get into more of a rhythm uh, with each other because with everybody else, it was just fine. <laughs> it was just fine, especially that pass to Benjamin Victor. And it, with Benjamin Victor, it was, it was so cool because I remember um, I called two plays in a row. I, I, I called the um, – I called the uh, the touchdown run with Tyler Huntley. I was like, oh, yeah, he about to run it in for a touchdown. And then right after that, I was like, oh, they going for two? All right, fade to Benjamin Victor. Fade to Benjamin Victor. And they did both of them, but the Benjamin Victor one ended up being a P.I. And then how did they go for two after that? I think they gave it to Williams, and then he got in. Um, so I didn't think they were going to do that, but they, I'm glad that it worked. So shout out to them. Uh, Greg Roman, just to get on Greg Roman for a little bit. Um, I, I know I've been seeing a lot of chatter about the play calling, the play calling with Trace McSorley versus the play calling with um, Tyler Huntley uh, and the fact that it was a bit different. Now, early on from beginning, it wasn't different on that first drive when it was third and five or third and six. And they called that QB, the QB draw with Trace It's like, no, I, I think Greg Roman was he was thinking about Lamar Jackson. He was thinking about Tyler Huntley. But he, I think since T Trace be chilling with them boys, man. Greg Roman must have thought, oh, yeah, Trace, he, he's up to speed, like, literally with them. He, 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 he should be as fast. But, no, that wasn't the case. Uh, they did that QB draw, and he got caught immediately right away. Um, but it, it was definitely not the best play call. But, uh, and I saw a lot of people, they were like, oh, yeah, Greg Roman, he's in midseason form. So we are ready to go. Uh, so it, it, that was just a head scratcher. But something else to think about, too, is the preseason. It's the preseason, so they're not going to show all this stuff. But at the same time, there can be some concern and some worry because we know how Ravens have operated. But right now, I think it's too early to worry about play calling. Uh, if we start seeing that in regular season, like if, if we don't see like significant improvements through week three, then I think it may. And, and it, of course, it all depends on how the games are going. Uh, it all depends on the flow of the game because every game is not the same. Every opponent is not the same. Every opponent's defense is not the same. So we'll just we'll, we'll see how that goes uh, with Giro and company. Um, but they, yeah, there were people saying, oh, man, well, they call in different plays for Tyler Huntley uh, and Trace McSorley. And you got to think that with Tyler Huntley, he's a lot closer to Lamar Jackson than Trace McSorley is. And when the offense was under... Tyler Huntley is it's a smoother transition um not that the offense can't be run with Trace McSorley but since Tyler Huntley is a lot closer to Lamar skill set than Trace McSorley is then that makes it an easier process now something that some people pointed out which again I saw but I didn't realize that I was seeing it was that the Ravens were playing a lot from under center and with them playing from under center that just opens up the playbook 
that much more. So that was a good thing. I think um, James Prochet onto the wide receivers. Devin Duvernay started off hot, cooled down a little bit, but I think he had like three catches, I believe. Um, so and he was making some contested catches, so it was good. It was nice to see that James Prochet. He had one catch. Um, other receivers, Tylen Wallace, he drew the pass interference, uh, and then he had the, the sideline incompletion, um, and then he had the fumble too, which was unfortunate. So hopefully uh, he'll have a bounce back game next week. Because again, with Tylen Wallace, I just had not I had not been hearing anything. I had not been hearing his name throughout training camp, so I was unaware if he was doing good, if he was doing bad, like what his status was uh, for training camp. Um, so. Now that like the game last night pretty much let us know where he's at, um, but so he's getting there. He's getting there though. He's get and he's a rookie. He's a rookie. This was his first NFL game. So again, cannot overanalyze anything. And he showed promise. Like I say, he drew the pass interference and that catch on the sideline was a nice catch, man. But it was an incompletion. Um, Gray caught a really nice pass from Tyler Huntley. He took he got hit by like three. Uh, Three Saints at the same time, but still held on to the ball. Um, so that was nice. Uh, Benjamin Victor, he had two catches, and one of them was a pass that got tipped. Actually, both of his catches, the pass got tipped. I just realized that, both of them. Uh, the one with from Tyler Huntley in the, uh, not in the back of the end zone, but along the sideline, that one got tipped by a wolf. Um, and then the, the one earlier than that, uh, it was like a maybe a five, six-yard completion. That one got tipped, I think, by the defensive lineman, but he still caught both. So good concentration by Benjamin Victor. Of course, um, Deion Kane didn't play. Hollywood Boykin didn't play. But we just, whenever Ravens return to practice, I would think it would be either Monday or Tuesday. Whenever they return to practice, the headline that I'm expecting to see, Hollywood Brown returns to practice. Because when you saw him and Lamar throwing passes to each other and Hollywood was cutting and jumping for the ball, oh, yeah, he's ready. He's ready. So whenever Ravens return to practice, I can almost guarantee you that we're going to have that. We're going to see that from whether it be Jeff Zrebic, Jamison Hensley, uh, Ravens official account. It's going to say, oh, there goes that number five. There goes that number five because he, he looked ready. He looked ready. So that is a positive sign that's a great sign and i love it i love i, I can't wait uh, so shout out to hollywood we'll see you very very soon my friend um jay jaylen moore i think he had he had a nice catch um and i remember doing hollywood stream the other day he was saying watch out for jaylen moore watch out for jaylen moore um so he had a really nice catch who else and i think that pretty much sums up the offense um, trying to think if I missed anybody. I don't think so. But anyway, special teams, Justin Tucker, 56 yard field goal. But Verity, Verity with a 53 yard field goal. So a lot of Ravens fans are already thinking of which which is the next team that Verity's gonna be on. Who are the Ravens gonna flip this guy for? What draft pick are they gonna flip him for? What are they gonna get for Verity? Because if he's out there chilling with Justin Tucker, out there kicking 53 yard field goals in an era where Field goal, port, field goal kickers are more and more important, especially for the extra points since they moved it back a couple of years ago. So, field goal kickers are very important. You need those guys. Um, and he, if he's chilling with Justin Tucker, then he knows how to be clutch. He knows how to kick the long ones and short ones, and he may even know how to sing opera too. So, shout out to Verity. Um, Johnny Townsend. Uh, I think Sam Cook got one punt early on, but Johnny Townsend handled it for the rest of the night, I believe. Something with him, though. Um... And initially, I was thinking like, okay, just shout out to Johnny Townsend because he's been he's been around the team, but he knows he's not going to make the team. But at the same time, he could be waiting for Sam Cook to either be released or retire next year because obviously not happening this year um, because that's what happened with Nick Moore. Ravens continue to keep Nick Moore, the long snapper, around on a practice squad all year. And a lot of us were like, why, 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 why? But then at the end of the year, they ended up releasing Morgan Cox. He went to the Titans. And then I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So... We'll see how the Ravens do with Johnny Townsend, see if they end up keeping him on the practice squad, and that'll sort of give you an indication with Sam Cook, possibly. So we'll see. Now on to the defense. Defense, um, oh, they had six turnovers, I think. I think they had six turnovers. And they had, I think they had three turnovers in the first quarter alone. But that defense, the starters, the depth guys, everybody was on it. 
Um, now, one thing that I did see from Taysom Hill that I saw from Jameis Winston and that I saw from Book, I think it was Book, um, they were not afraid to go not necessarily deep, but those uh, intermediate routes, those, um, yeah, I guess, yeah, a little bit deep. They weren't afraid to go deep on the Ravens. Not too deep, but they weren't afraid to get some nice little chunk plays on the Ravens throughout the game. Throughout the game. But Ravens defense, what they would do, they did a lot of bending, but not, uh, well, they did do some, <laughs> some breaking too. Um, but they, a lot of times they would bend, but not break because they were for some turnovers. Like these, these Saints were just fumbling that ball out of nowhere. They would just keep fumbling, 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 fumbling. It's like, whoa, okay. Um, but so that was nice to see. Shout out to Ravens defense. Uh, Broderick Washington, very disruptive from jump. I'm glad he got his opportunity. Uh, especially with Calais Campbell, Brandon Williams, Pernell McPhee, and Derek Wolf all being out. Um, so the defensive line was obviously a little bit short on people. But Broderick Washington, he was doing his thing early. Just a matter. BK was out there. He was a bit disruptive too. Um, but he wasn't out there for too long. Uh, Broderick Washington, I don't even think he was out there for too long. Um, so they they both look good. Um, Crawford, I think, yeah, I think it was Crawford. He made a couple of plays. Um, the pass rush, though. The pass rush, Dalen Hayes, he was getting after it, man. He was getting after it. Tyus Bowser, uh, for the limited amount of time that he was out there, he was doing his thing too. Dalen Hayes ended up getting a sack. Um, but the story of last night, I think, uh, had to be um, Adafe away, number 99. And everything that you've been hearing about and practicing all that, it's all true. It's all true. Every last bit of it, it's all true. Uh, that guy, he was showing out. Um, he really, he really did his thing last night, man. Even got him a third of a sack. Cause like I said, I, I think they should give the sack to all three people. Cause the Dafe away, ran, beat it, beat his offensive lineman, beat his tackle, opened his arms up and tried to close in on the quarterback. He, and he started the sack. Uh, and then Chris Smith and I, I forget, I, I still forgot who the last person was. I don't know if it was Brandon Stevens or who, but. Uh, the other two ended up closing it out. So shout out to Adafi away. He made a really nice tackle on. Was it a screen pass or was it a run? I think it might have been a run, but he made a really nice tackle. He, cause he got some long arms, man. He got long arms, so he grabbed the running back and threw him down to the ground. So Adafi away is so far so good. So we love it. Um, Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen looked really, really good in the limited amount of time that he was out there. He was out there for like a couple of drives, um, but he looked good. He looked decisive. He looked smart. So shout out to PQ. Uh, and he diagnosed the screen really good too and stopped it. Now Ravens did give up a couple of screens now. They, they gave up some big runs and they gave up some big screens and they gave up some big passes. Uh, so again, it's preseason, but, and it wasn't just, it wasn't starters out there playing the whole time, but just some a little fine tuning here and there that they can do. Um, for PQ look good. Malik Harrison, Malik Harrison, who on the Ravens' first official depth chart, he's listed as a starter next to PQ. It's looking like that could actually happen because they had LJ Ford out there, like for, really throughout the rest of the night, playing with all the backups, backups. So that'll be something to look out for because I really thought that um, LJ Ford would be the starter this year and they was like slowly transition to malik harrison but maybe they like hey all we needed was an off season we needed a true off season for malik harrison to get up to speed for him to get right so we'll see we'll see because um you know teams are faster than ever they may want that speed that that youth out there um so we'll just see how that goes throughout but malik harrison looked comfortable um cj board he had a fumble recovery so that was nice christian welch that thumper he ended up getting a shoulder stinger so he came out the game he didn't finish it so we'll see what happens with that um so yeah that would do it for the linebackers the cornerbacks i i, I last night i initially thought when we were doing our review i thought that marlon humphrey didn't play but that he actually did um and somebody told me in the comment section that he actually gave up a third down so i didn't even remember i remember marcus peters though <laughs> he, he was giving up some big plays some big catches uh, so, um, it, but he was playing way off and you know, Marcus Peters and, and one of those big plays that he gave up was where he tried to jump an underneath route that he thought Taysom Hill was going to throw, but Taysom Hill was like, nah, I ain't, I ain't letting you do that to me. You may catch a lot of other guys with that, even young quarterbacks, old quarterbacks, but you ain't catching me with that. Uh, so that was a smart play from Trace. Uh, and then he ended up, I mean, smart play from, from Taysom. Then he ended up going up top. 
Uh, and number one, I forget what his name was, but number one caught the ball. Number one was doing his thing last night for the Saints. Um, and, and Tavon Young ended up, he ended, it ended up being a completion, but Tavon Young hit him out of bounds. But to, speaking of Tavon Young, he looked healthy, wasn't playing scared, wasn't playing like timid or anything. Um, so shout out to him. That was nice to see. Uh, uh, just moving around the whole secondary, not even just corners or safeties. We just talk about it all. Brandon Stevens. I loved everything that I saw from this dude. Everything. They had him blitzing. They had him covering. This dude was always around the ball carrier. He's a physical guy. Uh, he got some good instincts. He was killing it, man. He really was. And the Ravens had him out there early and often. So that lets you know that's an indicator of how they feel about this guy. Because we've been hearing about him in training camp and stuff, about them using him a lot, blah, blah, blah. But I don't really get caught up too much in all that training camp talk because that's one thing. When we actually see it on the field, though, it makes it real. So it became real last night that these Ravens really like uh, Brandon Stevens. So shout out to him, man. And I just hope he continues to do well. Darius Washington, undrafted rookie free agent. They had him at safety. They had him at corner. They had him blitzing, too. So they had him doing a lot of things. Small guy, small stature, but big play. He forced a fumble. He almost had a pick. It was on the third and long, and he jumped it. And he almost had it, but he just couldn't quite catch it. But that's fine because you didn't give up the play. So shout out to our Darius Washington. Um, he... It's going to be exciting, man, to see what these guys do. And then, I mean, speaking of a third safety, third time's a charm, Geno Stone. Geno Stone, uh, leave no stone unturned, and he didn't. He got the diving pick, and then he got the other pick where uh, Chris Westry uh, ended up, like, sort of running into the wide receiver and the ball at the, at the perfect time, and then it ended up getting popped up, and Geno Stone was at the right place at the right time, like somebody in the comments said last night, but he's made the right play. Because we've seen a lot of times from really every team, not obviously not just the Ravens, but in the NFL, players can be at the right place at the right time, but they don't always make the right play. So we got to give Geno Stone his credit. He's trying to make this a hard decision for the Ravens when it comes to safety because he's on a one-year deal. Jordan Richards on a one-year deal. Anthony Levine's on a one-year deal. So the, the safety was Darius Washington, undrafted rookie free agent. So those safeties are like, oof. So the only safeties who are like safe, obviously Deshaun Elliott, Chuck Clark, um, and also uh, Brandon Stevens. But, but yeah, beyond that, no. Ain't no safety safe. Um, and I still, I don't really think we have a true free safety. But we'll see how these guys, how they end up being used and just the evolution of all of our safety. Because all of our safeties are pretty young. They're pretty young, but it seems like we just got a bunch of like, Box and strong safety. Not saying that these other guys can't do it, cause um, but we'll see, man. We'll see how it goes. Uh who else? Who else? I'm trying to think if I'm missing anybody, but I think oh, Westry, Westry, Westry. Um, big. He was a he was a gunner. They had Westry and Adolfe away as gunners. So you got them two long, fast, like crazy athletic guys as your gunners. Like, man, that's that's wild, man. That is wild. Like wild. Um, so but Chris Westry, I I like him. I didn't know anything about him going into this season. Um, and I had heard stuff from different people about him, but watching him last night, I liked him. He's a long guy, was six four, but he's fast, he's tall, he's physical too. Um, and he could be something, man. He could be something. And I think he has a, a an opportunity, big opportunity, especially with the, the injury to Jimmy Smith. The, the current injury and Jimmy Smith's injury history. So I think Chris Westry could end up being somebody that they want to keep around. Um, so we'll see how that goes. He did get that, that stupid penalty last night. I, and I don't even say it's stupid on his part, but more so the NFL. Because he was just pointing at the guy. Oh, taunting. It's like, come on now. Um... Anthony Averett, mm, mm, mm. hurt my heart for Anthony Averett last night because Anthony Averett, and this is something with him, um, just his his play style. He he's not getting burnt. He's not getting beat uh, over the top. He's not getting dogged. He's not getting oh, he's not getting any of that stuff. But with him, the thing is that he'll be there around the play, 
but he won't make the play on the ball. Like he'll he'll be right there, but he just won't make the play on the ball. So that's that's where he struggles at a bit. Um, Cause again, he's not a bad cornerback at all. Um, but sometimes he just, like I said, struggles to make that play on the ball. He gave up a touchdown and he gave up a couple catches, um, but it was all the same thing, all the same thing. Just him being in the right place, right time, but not making the right play. And again, it reminded me of Chuck Clark a lot of times when he's covering a tight end. It, it can be the same thing. He'll be right there, but he, he will struggle to make a play uh, on the ball. So just some little fine tuning uh, that they would need um, to try to fix that. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that translates into the regular season. Um, but yeah, overall, though, it was good stuff. Uh, something that I had noticed, and, and I, I brought it. I brought it up that um, I brought it up uh, in the live stream last night. That, and not that I expected during the regular season, because they're not all gonna be starters. Oh, Sean Wade. Just to end it out, Sean Wade. He ended up getting that pick to seal the game. And, and something that we mentioned uh, was that with Sean Wade, there was a lot of talk about him not being able to play outside corner. Oh, since he's a, when he's a slot corner in the slot, he did good. But on the outside, he, he was terrible. He was bad. That's what a lot of people were saying. But when we had the interview with his father a couple of months ago, um, he, and y'all check that video out too. But he said with Sean Wade, the thing with him that was bothering him last season was an injury to his ankle or his foot. So that injury made him unsure of a lot of times when he would jump up to deflect the pass or jump up to try to get a pick. So it just made him unsure of himself. So that kind of set his play back a little bit. Uh, but I thought it was very fitting that the interception to win the game from Sean Wade came when he was playing outside corner. So I, I love that. So shout out to him. But what I was saying before is that um, with, with the entire draft class, that played because obviously Rashad Bateman and Ben Cleveland they didn't play at all, but the entire draft class from this year they were all making plays. Every last one of them made plays last night, so they are off to a good start. And again, no, I don't expect them all to have so much significant playing time each. I don't because they got guys in front of them, but they're off to a good start. This is a nice confidence booster, and this is a nice way to to get things going. So shout out to all of them. Shout out to the Ravens for taking care of business And 18 straight 18 straight That's I know it's preseason but still 18 straight preseason games Now if we could have this same preseason Preparation in the postseason Then oh we'd be unstoppable Unstoppable But hey it's all good man So anyway team keep it clean I appreciate y'all I love y'all thank you for watching This thing went on like it was a live stream But hey it's the first post game thoughts video of the year um and i look forward to uh just us having a great week together uh, i appreciate you all support um i appreciate you all just tuning in uh and rocking with team keep it clean i love y'all thank you all for everything uh and we out